Hi everybody, this is um, Mimi from Time from the Holidays. Um, I just want to do a quick video. Um, May is Lyme Disease Awareness Month and it's a cause that's close to my heart because I have it. I have something called chronic Lyme. Um, so I just wanted to bring some attention to it um, for my website. Um, we're doing videos for all health awareness um, days and everything. So anyway, thanks for stopping by. Um, I think the most important thing when it comes to Lyme disease is prevention. Once you get it, if you don't get it treated right away, you're going to become chronic and it's just an awful thing and I just don't want that to happen to you. So really the most important thing I want to get across today is prevention. So if you, it is spring right now, so if you're going to be out and about, so are the ticks. So make sure there's just some little things you can do to, you know, try to prevent getting a tick. Um, you can wear white socks and light clothing so that if you see a tick crawling up you, it's easily spotted. Um, carry a lint roller with you so you can roll on your clothes to get anything you don't see off of you. Um, that is not going to get out an embedded tick. That's just to get anything that might be still crawling on your, your clothes. Um, keep grass short in your yard. Ticks like to hang out in the tall grass and weeds. So stay out of any areas like that. If you're like walking in, down a trail in the woods, try to stay on the path. Don't wander off in the weeds and the tall grass. Um, you can put tick tubes in your yard. Those, um, they collect ticks. You just like put them down in the ground. Um, they sink in down in the ground and ticks are attracted to whatever fluids in there or whatever and they fall in there and trap them. Um, make sure to use tick repellents when you're outside, especially ones with D. There's also some natural ones and on our website on whatislime.com we have um, some natural recipes for like repellents using essential oils. Um, Avon Skin So Soft um, is also another great one. There's um, a specific kind which we'll, we'll put down in the links for you that smells good and it's made of natural ingredients but it still wards off ticks. Um, always carry tweezers or tick remover with you. Um, tweezers work just fine um, or you can get a tick remover that you can put right on your keychain um, and those are nice because um, it's kind of with you all the time so you don't have to remember to bring it. You'll just always have it and um, it, whether you're camping or going for a walk or taking the kids to the park or whatever if somebody happens to get a tick embedded you can just have it right there with you to get that tick out and I've used mine several times and it really does work good. Um, make sure to do tick checks when you come in from outdoors. Um, always scan to places where ticks hide like in your hairline, your armpits, your groin. Um, just kind of do a quick tick check like if you've been at the park all day throw the kids in the back bath and you know just make sure they don't have any ticks embedded in them. Also make sure to check your pets. I know this year all my friends are telling me that their dogs already have had a bunch, so um, make sure to check your animals. You can use the tweezers or tick removers um, on them too. Tucking your pants into your socks help the helps the ticks not get inside your pants. Um, so yeah, you can tuck your pants into your socks. Um, a very important thing is to learn how to remove a tick properly. Um, a lot of people do it wrong. So. If you do find a tick embedded in you, um, like I said, use a tweezer tick remover to remove the tick. Do not try to use your fingers to get the tick out. When you use the tweezers or tick remover, you put it as close to your skin as you can and then firmly pull up on the tick so that it just kind of releases and pops out. Um, if you twist it or squeeze it, one, you might accidentally leave the head in there. The head might pop off and be left in your skin. And also if you squeeze the body, it might regurgitate its stomach contents into you. And that's where the um, Lyme bacteria lives. So you have like a, an increased rate of getting infection if you do that. So make sure to remove it properly. Um, do not try to burn the tick off with like a match or a lighter or put chemicals or Vaseline or nail polish or any of these old things that we used to do to remove ticks. Um, again, those make the tick regurgitate its stomach contents into you, increasing your likelihood of getting infected if that tick carries Lyme or one of the other um, illnesses that ticks carry. 
Um, ticks do not just pass Lyme disease. There are several co-infections um, that they pass. Here's a list of many of them. And every year they find more. Like I don't even know if my list is current. Like I try to add to it whenever there's a new one. But, um, you know, infections evolve, unfortunately. So anyway, um, once you do remove the tick, make sure to wash your skin with soapy water and peroxide. Um, you can save the tick by putting it in a plastic bag with a wet cotton ball and um, keep it in your fridge or freezer. There's, I'll put a list of labs on our website. Um, here's a link to um, where you can find like what labs to send it to. Um, these labs, collect, you can send the tick to them and they'll have instructions on exactly how to keep the tick um, before you send it. And they'll test the tick for Lyme disease and different co-infections so you know if the tick has anything or not. Just kind of like peace of mind. Um, there's also certain labs, like if you do feel sick and you get symptoms, um, Lyme tests are not very accurate. A lot of doctors won't tell you this either, but they're very inaccurate. And if you are having any symptoms or you develop a rash, First, try to get your doctor just to treat you. If they'll, at the very least, give you 21 days of doxycycline, that's a start. But, um, you know, talk to your doctor and, and try to see if they'll, they'll treat you first off after a tick bite. Um, if you do get a test and it comes out negative, um, that does not mean you don't have Lyme disease. Virginia even passed a law saying that if you have a negative test, the doctor is required to tell you that does not mean you do not have Lyme disease. And you should probably be retested again. If you have symptoms, maybe sending your blood to a specific Lyme lab like Igenex um, would be good. There's, I'll put a list of the different labs you can send your blood to. Um, they specialize in tick-borne diseases and they'll also test for co-infections too. Again, Lyme is not the only infection ticks pass and it's not just deer tick ticks that pass infections. Um, all different types pass, all different ticks pass different types of infections. So anyway, May is Lyme Disease Awareness Month, and I hope that you guys stay safe. Um, you know, again, try to prevent it if you can. If you do get symptoms, um, the symptoms are different in every person. Kids might come across with, like, they might get diagnosed with ADD or ADHD, and it can lead to pandas. Um, they might withdraw and not want to go to school anymore, just be generally ill. Um, and adults... Sometimes symptoms show up right away and sometimes they don't. Some people get a bullseye rash, some people get hives, some people don't get any rash at all. Um, Bardonella is a tick-borne infection that gives you like a stretch mark type of rash. Um, Rocky Mountain Fever gives you little dots on your hands and skin. Um, there's a lot of different symptoms and everybody kind of reacts differently. Generally at the very beginning you'll, you'll feel tired um, you'll get like achy joints. Some people get in their knees, some people get in their shoulders or elbows. Any, any one of your joints can be affected. You'll just have a lot of unexplained pain. Um, you'll probably become very tired and have that feeling like, oh, I just can't get out of bed today. I can't make myself move. You lose your motivation. Um, for me, I had like extreme anxiety. I started having panic attacks. I started getting heart palpitations. Um, I had some gastrointestinal problems. Um, and it all developed, like, as it took him longer and longer to diagnose me, my symptoms just got worse throughout the years. And eventually I got to how I am now, where I just have, like, excruciating back pain at all times. Um, every day I feel dizzy. I have head pressure. I have memory problems, word retrieval problems. Um, you'll probably see some of that in this video. I I mostly just have to lay down. Like, any activity that I do, I just feel, like, extremely exhausted after afterwards. And I just have to lay down to recuperate. Taking a shower is hard. Um, it's led to POTS in me, which is a problem with blood pressure. My blood pressure drops, but my heart rate um, raises when I'm when I stand up or if I'm standing for any period of time, I have a really hard time standing in lines at stores. 
um, thank God for grocery delivery now or <laughs> curbside pickup, but yeah, there's, there's so many, I feel like an internal vibration all the time. Um, there's just so many symptoms and every person is different. So, um, you know, I'm just doing a quick video and I'm going to rely on my friends who also have Lyme disease to tell their stories below in the comments. Like, please tell us your symptoms, how long it took you to get diagnosed, um, what you had to go through to get diagnosed, all the different diagnoses <laughs> you had because Lyme disease tends to lead into chronic fatigue syndrome, fibromyalgia, POTS. A lot of us seem to have Ehlers-Danlos syndrome too, um, or Epstein-Barr um, virus, pro you know, problems that linger on. Like there seems to be like a connection with Lyme disease with a lot of other conditions and illnesses. So share your stories below so other people learn. Um, a lot of my friends with um, with Lyme disease developed multiple sclerosis and Parkinson's and, um, you know, it just, and lupus. So, you know, just tell us your stories. We want to hear more. So I know this was just a quick video and there's like way more to Lyme disease. I'm hoping that um, the long haulers COVID research is going to lead to some help from us because it seems very similar with the shortness of breath and the um, total fatigue at all times, the awful brain fog we experienced, chronic Lyme and COVID long hauler seems very similar. And I'm hoping that the research for that will lead to help for Lyme patients and chronic fatigue patients and, you know, all the chronic, chronically ill patients that experience these symptoms for many years now that can't get help. So anyways, you guys all have a wonderful day, and I wish you all well. Bye.